There truly is power in rest. And a man at rest is at his best. And in Gary's new book, he shares how you can enter into that rest. And I love that because in today's world, there's so much stress, there's depression, confusion. I think everybody's running to and fro, seeking answers, trying to do it in their own strength, or just giving up and throwing their hands up. It's a pretty confusing place. Absolutely. And there isn't very much rest out there, but yet God has rest, Gary. How does that happen? You talked about the Sabbath. The Sabbath, lots of confusion around that as well. There People is. think it's a day, it's a, it's a denomination. What is the Sabbath? All right, well, we just already talked about the Sabbath being a picture of what Adam lost. Remember, Adam had rest. He didn't wake up every day thinking, hey, Eve, how are we going to survive today? Right. Okay, he had purpose, and God provided. God provided. You might remember Matthew 6, Jesus saying, why do you worry about what you eat and what you wear. Life is more than that. Look at the birds. They don't toil or sweat. God feeds them. God feeds them. How did the fish show up in the boats? In Luke chapter 5, we mentioned God brought those. So there's another system where we don't have to run after provision where we can rediscover our purpose. Yes. And that is what the key to rest is. All right. So to answer your question about the Sabbath, there is a lot of confusion out there about the Sabbath. And uh, the Bible answers the question in Colossians, the second chapter, verse 16. It says, Paul says, Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. Old Testament, were to come. The reality, remember that word, reality, reality. however, is found in Christ. So the Sabbath day was a shadow, if you will, that looked forward. In itself, it wasn't the reality, okay? It's not the reality. There's no freedom in it. It's just a picture because they were still under that earth curse system. They still had to run and sweat and toil. So the Sabbath day did give them a day of rest. They could focus on God. But all of that was a picture of what God was going to restore because, remember, man was created to live on the seventh day. Adam lost the seventh day, the day of rest. Now, to answer the question, so this, let's just go back for a minute to, to um, Genesis. Let's go back to the, to the Sabbath as we find it. So the Sabbath was a rest. Okay, but what, what does that mean, the Sabbath day? Genesis gives us an insight. Second chapter, it says, The heavens and earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he'd been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. Now, he wasn't tired. Right. Why, why did he rest? Because it was completed. It was complete. And the Bible says it was finished. Mm. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. He separated it because that's where man was supposed to live. That was the blessed, that's the blessing. That's, I mean, that's the blessed, man was to live with no stress. He was to live in that seventh day and he was to rule over the earth realm. Genesis says he was to rule the earth. So he was not to be bound by the survival mentality. So when Adam lost it all, his mindset had to change from ruling to being dominated by a slavery mentality of survival of just existing. So he lost himself. He lost wow. his identity. He lost, he, he forgot who he was. He, he lost his royalty. He was reigning yes. as royalty and now he's basically dethroned. He, he lost it all. Satan yeah. is, is the taskmaster and right. debt, dysfunction, it's lack, insufficient. all yes. of those things yes. now become his life. So the Sabbath day again was a picture and this scripture is phenomenal to us as New Testament believers. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9 says, there remains then, because people think this is all Old Testament. The Sabbath day was Old Testament. But we have to remember what Colossians told us. The Sabbath day is a picture. It it's is a not shadow a shadow of the future. It is not a day. <laughs> right. I mean, you can fuss all you want. Is it Monday, Sunday, <laughs> Saturday? The whole purpose of the Sabbath day was, a sh it was a shadow of the reality. Pointing in a, to Jesus, In right? a sense... <laughs> In a true sense, Jesus is the Sabbath. Yes. He is the rest. Without Jesus, there is no Sabbath. You have the shadow, but you can't eat a shadow. Right. There's no reality in a shadow. Right. 
The shadow just tells us what the reality is going to look like. It's like seeing a picture of a Fig Newton. Okay, you, you can kind of see what it's about, but until you taste one, you don't have the reality. All right? Are you getting hungry? No, I'm just saying that. I'm just saying, so this is how it is in this, in this picture of the, of the Sabbath. It's simply a shadow to give us insight of what God is going to bring to pass, which he does in Christ, which means we have the shadow now. We have yes. the reality. So the fact that they did not or didn't have to, could not, I should say, painfully toil and sweat, tells us in Christ we don't have to live under that system. But Hebrews chapter 4 is a fantastic scripture that you have to, as a New Testament believer, grab hold of. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did his. So what does that mean? And how do we enter that rest? Okay, we have a Sabbath rest, it says. Yes. For the New, New Testament, Sabbath rest. There's an escape from that earth curse system. Anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work. When did God rest from his work? When it was finished and complete. We just read that in Genesis chapter 2, right? But that's not talking about our physical work, is it? Well, no, what I'm saying is God rested because everything was finished right. and man was to live in that seventh day, yes. the finished state. Everything's complete. So what he's saying is if you enter into God's rest, now through Christ, Jesus has brought back to us everything Adam has lost. We have a, the ability to live life at a different level, a different way of life than the earth curse system. So they're saying if you'll tap into God's rest, everything finished, everything complete that Jesus brought, the reality, right. then we can rest from our own work, it says, or we can rest from that painful toil and sweat and find ourselves and find God's purpose for our life. Yes. This is good news. Yes, and we do it by faith. Do it That's by faith. the best thing. It's like, how do we enter that rest? We do it by faith. We do it by, by faith. It. There are principles we have yes. to learn, just like we see Jesus feeding the 5,000. All right, he didn't say, go get a job. Hey, Jesus, we got to feed these 20,000 people here today. What do we do? Well, I'll tell you what, you guys go down to the town there. You get a couple jobs. You work five jobs a day. And I'll tell you what, we'll feed these. It might take us eight months wages, as they said. Mm -hmm. We'll get it done. But that's too late. Eight months too long. Right. That's what, you know, they told Jesus. It would take eight months wages to feed these guys. So his system wasn't painful toil. No, the kingdom did not come under that same painful toil and sweat system. It produced the food for all those people with 12 baskets left over. And a fish with a coin in its mouth. Oh, Peter had taxes right. to pay. Jesus didn't say, go down to, to Jerusalem, get a job. I mean, come on, get with it. You got taxes to pay, get a job and pay him. He didn't say that because if he would have had to do that, if Peter would have had to, to get a job, he would have had to leave his assignment. You see, now we do gather, and there's a lot we can teach along these lines. We're not saying to live a life where we don't do anything. That's absolutely not the case. But people cannot be on assignment, their, their, their purpose, if they're bound by this painful toil and sweat right. system. They make, they make their decisions based on survival, not purpose. Yes, and I like how you talk about receiving versus laboring and toiling and painful sweating. It's like you're doing the work, but you're doing it with you're that gathering. rest. There's so you are at your best because you're doing it with rest. You're on assignment. I always say you gather while on assignment. The Holy Spirit shows you, hey, Peter, there's a fish. Go yes. catch that fish and pay the taxes. Stay on assignment, but gather. And there is labor and gathering, but you're on assignment and you're not anxiously. And if we, I tell you what, you dig into this, this book, it gets into it in detail. Yes, yes, the I'm vision. telling you, I'm telling you, this, this principle we're talking about, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9, write that down. This principle will literally change your life. I mean, if I, you say, hey, Gary, how, what do I need to know? I would say you have got to learn Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. What is it talking about? Sabbath rest, all the, what, how do I tap into that? We don't have time to get into it, right. but you have to know it because it's what changed our life. And this book covers it, and you need to get the book because we yes. can't cover it today. Yes, and there's you so many more things. I mean, you talk about the double portion and how to receive that, and so many other things that you talk about in here. Your financial well, revolution, there's no Sabbath the rest without rest. the double portion. We find out, and we'll talk about that mm -hmm. in a later broadcast. But it's all in the book, and it tells you, you know, how this thing operates. It's how it changed our life, and you need the book. You need to know the principles of the Word of God. So. 
We just want to invite you. We'll be back in a minute to tell you more about that when we return. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.